This week, we're all feeling the pressure. It wouldn't be first on my list. I sense a rocky road ahead. As house hunting takes its toll on everyone. Honestly, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> is that a deal breaker? So it's best to be direct. What is this talk of a crash? I want it, I want it, I want it. And know your own mind. Half a million pounds to get a bus to work isn't for me. What's happening to us this week? I don't know. So that we can all emerge smiling. Yeah, it's good. You're happy, aren't you? Yeah. Look to Phil and Kirsty. Don't get much better than that. This week, we're in South East London with two couples whose hunt for a dream home has come a cropper. Indecision, poor communication and pipe dreams have all got in the way of confident compromise. But they've called us in. And not before time. The average price of a two-bed flat in South East London has increased steadily over the last five years. At over £360,000, they're almost 184000 above the average property value for England and Wales. It appeals to city types for its good commuter links. But its green space and tree-lined streets bring in the creative crowd as well. So to avoid being priced out, our house hunters need to get cracking. The focus for my search is around the iconic bend in the River Thames, with the Isle of Dogs to the north and areas like Greenwich and Blackheath to the south. Computer programmer Andrew and his Brazilian wife Leah, who works in HR, have been together for three years. She was all set to leave the country when fate stepped in. Leah and I met a few years ago now in a bar in central London. Leah was about to leave London and we saw each other in the bar and we got together and then we moved into a three-bed house and we've been there ever since. Although renting was fine at first, ten months ago baby Andy was born. Yay! <laughs> so now they want the security of a place they can call their own. Life is very different now. It's very tiring. Obviously we wouldn't change it for the world. We'll try and have the second one very soon and then maybe we'll be happy If we there. get the house. If we get the house. <laughs> It would mean everything to me, buying a house. We need a better place and a place that we can call ours before we have the second baby. <laughs> They've been saving hard, and with a large deposit and mortgage, their budget's an impressive £600,000. With that comes a pretty specific wish list. My commute at the moment can involve leaving the house at 10 to 9 and being sat at my desk at 10 past 9. No travel worries at all. I would really want to maintain that if possible. A 20-minute walk to work's a real luxury in London, but that's just the tip of his wish list iceberg. Own front door would be nice. Um, Step-free access for the buggy. Off-street parking would be a bonus. That seems reasonable, but the London market isn't. The average asking price of a three-bed property where they're currently renting is over a billion pounds. <laughs> Your dreams are very, very... For the budget, I don't think it's going to happen. Andrew started saving nearly a decade ago, witnessed the market crash of 2008 and has been nervous about property ever since. I should have invested in property years ago rather than shares. My concern now is that we buy a property, the market goes down, maybe we should wait a little bit longer. I think Andrew really needs the push. He seems to just say no, 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 no. Oh dear, that's a lot of no's to deal with. We will have to compromise. I don't want to. He's right to guard his hard-earned money. But buying a home for the long term, which is what they want, is the best way to ride out any variations in the market. So swift action and compromise are key. I can see utter fear written all over yes. your face. Yes. <laughs> After waiting seven years, and finally we take the plunge, and it's just at the wrong time, uh, that would be a real shame, because first-time buyers... Yeah, uh, it, w it would, and, and, but we, we, can't, we can't sit on the fence for any longer. I agree. It's not easy out there, and I appreciate that, you know, you're, you're going to want to spend your money wisely. That's yeah? the plan. Do I sense your preference is to um, continue your walking commute to work and stay on the Isle of Dogs? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. Um, and how realistic do you think that is? Unrealistic. Have you considered other areas aside from bit here? I would love to live in Greenwich or Black Heat. Uh, I love the idea of living in a small town. They're great places to be, so uh, a compromise on the commute, on the walk, is, is fine, because I think those places are worth yeah, it. Absolutely. Okay. Did you just use the word compromise? <laughs> I'm sure he did say it, didn't he? I did say compromise on, did. on that tiny little bit. <laughs> we better get cracking, hadn't we? <laughs>
baby steps, Phil, but I think you're starting to get through to him. They've got 600 grand. The building can be old on the outside, but has to be modern on the inside. They'd like at least three bedrooms. A short commute to Canary Wharf is essential. And outside space is a must. There's no suitable stock available where they currently rent on the Isle of Dogs, so I'm starting my search south of the river, covering Greenwich and Blackheath. So Phil's in Greenwich. Meantime, I'm a couple of miles southwest in the suburbs of Broccoli and Forest Hill. I'm with another pair of first-time buyers, model Lucy and her fiancé, business manager Dan. We met at a festival in the Nevada desert two years ago. She was flirting with me on the first day. I told him he had very nice calves, which he did have very nice calves. They're quite meaty and muscly. With Lucy sold on Dan's calves, the relationship quickly grew legs. We were engaged recently on a camper van trip. Love Make a good housewife, you would. Would I know? Yeah. So I don't get any you ideas. look great in a pinny. <laughs> and we just recently went and got a ring, didn't we? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. English-born Lucy grew up in Australia, and they're both widely travelled. But there's no question where they want to put down their roots. We both really love London life. We love all it has to offer us, the museums, the music, the nightlife, and we're both very involved in that. Well, yeah. our friends are located <laughs> here, and so we're not going to move any particular time soon. Yeah. yeah. When the tenancy on their rental property came to an end, they moved into B&B accommodation in this converted church. But they need to move out soon, so time is of the essence. We're truly and utterly desperate. We've got about two weeks left on this place and we need to find somewhere quick or we're living in our camper van. Sadly, it's not just the possibility of being homeless which is putting the pressure on this search. This last year has been crazy. I lost my stepmother to cancer a year ago, and now literally um, three months ago, my mum was diagnosed with terminal cancer as well. So that's, that's changed quite a few things. It would be great to have her come and stay with us um, while she's either convalescing or to take care of her. It's about seizing the day at the moment, and we need to get things sorted for some stability for the rest of the family as well, don't we? Yes. So space to accommodate Dan's mum is important, as well as room to entertain their wider social circle. It's really quite important to have two good double-sized bedrooms. And a nice open plan kitchen with a dining space area. We're looking for a garden, that's important, because yeah. we've got a little dog, a little rescue terrier called Ginger. Yeah, and we both uh, like gardening and want to grow our own vegetables and that kind of stuff, so get a bit of, sort of Tom and Barbara good about it would be great. <laughs> ah, the good life. I'll do my best. With Dan's mum to consider, a wedding to plan and a home to find all happening at once, these two have a lot going on. But they've made a drastic decision, which means I'll have to be tough on them, right from the start. You have been looking at 450 and now you're looking at 350. 350 yes. So we've decided to take £100,000 out of the budget yep. and invest it in a property in France. We're starting a new business project <coughs> down there and we were also hoping to use the property, which would be an old farmhouse, mm -hmm. as also the wedding venue. It does seem a wee bit bonkers. Yeah. The idea of trying to organise a wedding in a venue which doesn't yet exist, <laughs> with money that you're taking out of your base property. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you say to me, OK, we're going to take that money and we're going to park it for a year and a half, two years, then that's different. We just kind of want to make everything happen at once. I think parking that money for a use a year down the track seems a lot more sensible than, than panic buying a place in France to get everything sorted. What you want in London is or has already been very difficult for you to find at 450,000. Sure, yeah. It's much more difficult to find at 350, yeah. and you want to have two good double bedrooms. Yeah. yeah. I think the reason why the double bedroom is important is because of we want to be able to have your mum with us. Mm. Where we were sitting at 350, we could go up to 375, 400, couldn't we? we could. Including stamp yeah. duty. Well played, Kirsty. An extra 50 grand to help them get what they need. Okie dokie. Well, as someone said to me the other day, rug up, it's cold out there. Yeah. The weather might be, but unfortunately, the market isn't. Lucy and Dan are first timers. After success in their careers and an inheritance of Dan's, they have a cash budget of up to £400,000, including stamp duty. Which means we're looking at properties available for £380,000 or less. They'd like a two bed flat. With good space for entertaining and plenty of light. They also need some garden space for Ginger the dog and to grow some veggies. They like the areas of Broccoli and Forest Hill. But I'll also be showing them something in the up-and-coming area of Catford. So that's two sets of 30-something first-time buyers with handsome budgets in an ugly market. We're going to have to work hard to hit the right notes on this search. 
Are you playing lovely music? I'm trying to jolly things up a bit. Oh, really? Serenading your arrival. Oh, that's very kind of you. I brought you the brolly. Thanks, hon. Um, uh, we had quite a difficult chat, mm. my couple and I, because his mum, Dan's mum, is very sick. So that's become a part of their search, is the possibility of having to accommodate her. OK. But at the same time, they were thinking of buying their own wedding venue in France, and I've put okay. to well, that. That cost them a pretty packet. Yeah, so I think, yeah. My guys have done very well. They've saved up fantastic deposit. But it's up to 600. Really? Yeah. Whether he'll actually spend it or not is a different matter. He's kind of sat on the fence for such a long time, but his wife has said, no more children until we buy a house. How many have they got? They've got one, but he'd like lots more. Right, okie doke. So he's under some pressure. As are we, by the sounds of it. I'm kicking off our South East London search with newlyweds Andrew and Leah. Andrew's priority is his commute, and we're a little more than 25 minutes from his work in the suburb of Blackheath Village. Leah's already said she'd like to live here, so I'm confident location's a winner. I just hope they find lots to love about this 1930s block. Flats here don't come up for sale very often, so I think it's a real gem. First thoughts? It wouldn't be first on my list um, from the outside. <laughs> oh, Phil, not the first impression you were hoping for. You live inside. You, you, you wouldn't spend more than four seconds a day outside looking, looking in. But this really works for the commute and, and the community. That's why you're here. <laughs> I can see this is going to be a hard sell, but I'm hoping the interior can win them over. You don't get loads of space for your money in this part of town, but that's the cost of the easy commute. That said, this ground floor flat does have three bedrooms. It's also got the modern interior that Andrew and Leah are after. The kitchen, bathroom and lounge are all done to a very high standard, and the flat has direct access to the shared outside space. The guide price is 550 to 575,000 pounds, so it's comfortably within their ideal limit of 600 grand. Andrew's not looking very enamoured. <laughs> what's what's going through your mind? Uh, yeah. well, let's just okay. Let's have, <laughs> just poke your heads in there and, and see what you make of the kitchen. It's modern, like we asked for. Uh, it looks nice on the inside than it does on the outside so far. Trying to remain positive, yeah. Trying to remain positive isn't quite the reaction I was after. But this kind of fresh, bright look continues in here. But it is small, very small. OK. So this is on the market with a guide price of 550 to 575. Wow. Yeah. I uh, know, location's good. But... It, it is the location that, that wins. That's pushing the price. Yeah. OK. I don't think this place is helping Andrew get over his property commitment issues. I did know that this was going to be a bit of a reality check for them. Well, no, not for me. Next. But there was a reason why this type of flat commands the price that it does, and that's because it is in a fantastic village location and yet within 25 minutes of Canary Wharf. I sense a rocky road ahead. Well, it's never easy street for us, Phil, is it? So, it was a short viewing. <laughs> yeah, not quite right. Location is perfect, but the size of the property and the property itself is not opened enough. The supposed garden isn't really a garden. If you're wanting to see somewhere bigger that doesn't have all of these other issues, then we're going to stretch the commute or we're going to stretch the budget or, you know, something's going to give. We're going to have to compromise. Ah, here comes. <laughs> um, if, yes. Doesn't look very happy about this, does he? Come on. It's OK. <laughs> it's OK. We'll be all right, I hope. Hope springs eternal, Phil. More like the winter of discontent around here. This week, I'm with newly engaged Lucy and Dan. They're currently living in a bed and breakfast. They need to check out of the B&B and check into somewhere they can call home. And I'm trying to help new parents, Andrew and Leah, get over his market fears and take the plunge on a property. The first place I showed them was a winner in terms of location but a loser in size and layout. We're going to have to compromise. Ah. For Dan and Lucy, I'm looking for a two-bedroom flat for under £380,000 and we're kicking off with their number one area of broccoli right in the heart of South East London. It's open, leafy and a hot spot for young creatives, so it should be right up their street. Talking of which... Camper vans, camper vans. Yes. It's cool. Right on. It? A 
promising start, Kirsty. Get them revved up for what's to come. We are here to see a basement flat. OK. Basement flats are great if you do the right thing out the back. Yes. And in my opinion, they've done the right thing out the back. Curb appeal, good. Yes. yes. Nice front nice Yeah. Right, let's get inside. Let's do it. The great thing about this flat is the extension that was added 15 years ago. There's a long galley kitchen leading through to a bright dining room and down into the conservatory and garden, which is where this place really comes to life. But wow factor costs. And at nearly £380,000, it's at the top of their budget. It's a strange but quite intelligent layout. Yeah, this is a weird kitchen. Essentially what they've done is put the kitchen in a very tight space yes. in order to utilise the entertaining space. Move on down, okay. move on down and tell me what you think. Oh, we have a dining area, Dan. Uh, OK. This is like where we could actually cook a nice meal in here, couldn't yeah. we? Yeah, well, that's the thing. You see, your kitchen is really only oh, for cooking. Nice. And we said see, a galley yeah. kitchen was one of the things we could compromise in if we had the dining area, didn't we? Yes. Now I see what oh, they've done. Yeah. OK, that's nice and bright. You've got a lovely long garden. I know they like to grow veggies and there's certainly loads of room for that. It's like a very toadstooly kind of Enid Blyton. Ginger would love this. And already imagining their dog here, so the garden's a winner, as is location and entertaining space. I do have one small concern though. The second bedroom is tiny. Yes. But you okay. could do something with it. Okay. Go and have a look. Okay. See what you see. Okay. Come yeah. on then. Um, I'm really liking the feel to this though. Don't you? Yeah, it's got yeah. a really good feel. Yeah. They're after two good-sized double bedrooms, but in this location, even with their newly increased budget, that's a hard thing to find. So this is the using this is a little okay, study is, guest room. This is the single. Yeah. There's no windows though. That's no. The um. Don't know. Okay, yeah. Let's check the other one. Okay. Well, the outlook from this room isn't great. Um. Okay. It's not bad. It's a decent size. You can fit a double bed in. Yeah. I think yeah. this room's great, it ticks the box. Yeah, this works. The only thing that's putting me off is that second bedroom. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Is that a deal breaker for the rest of the house? <sighs> no matter how amazing this property is, that room is the potential pitfall. Aha. Uh -huh. Hello. So, what are you thinking? The master bedroom, nice and big. Yeah, yeah I like really that. Really bright, I'm surprised yeah. for a basement flat. The second bedroom is small. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing we're struggling with and it hasn't got a window as well. The thing about this flat is the space where you're actually going to be spending the time yeah. Yeah. is very strong. Yeah. 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 But this is right area, right communal space, wrong spare bedroom. Yeah. yeah. We know where we are, mm -hmm. we know where the compromises lie with yeah. this property. Yeah. Let's go and see another one. Okay. okay. Definitely a good start, but I don't think we're finished yet. Back with Andrew and Leah, and after a disastrous start in Blackheath, I'm keen to make amends. We're in Kidbrook Village, a new housing development one and a half miles further from Andrew's Canary Wharf office than the first property. There's still the community feel that's so important for Leah and baby Andy, and here they get much more space for their money, both inside and out. Happy with the area? Yes, yeah, very. In terms of the commute, Andrew, it's, I mean, it's basically one stop up the road from Blackheath, mm. so it's an extra three minutes or so. How do you feel about that? It's doable. Yay! Yeah. Come on, let's get in. Through your own front door this Ooh. time. So no issues with curb appeal or commute. Although they would prefer a house, this is a split-level flat with bags of space across two floors. Downstairs, there's a double bedroom with ensuite. Upstairs, the other two bedrooms, this massive open-plan living area and a private patio. It's almost 50% bigger than the first property I took them to, so their concerns about size have certainly been addressed. The guide is 575 to £600,000, so it's right at the maximum of what they want to spend. Now, given that um, the first flat you felt wasn't open-plan enough, wow. I thought this, this might do the job. Excellent. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely um, love it. Andy? It's fantastic. It's, uh, it's ticking all the boxes so far. I love this area. Yes. Fantastic. Leah's looking very happy about it, which is good. Wow, you've certainly turned a corner here, Phil. This one seems to have success written all over it. Fantastic. So, pushing the pram. Yes, amazing. Pretty love special, it. isn't it? Very special. Is Andrew always a bit reluctant? I, mean, I can sense he's that he's struggling. He's always right, Phil, always right. I need someone to explain to him what the market is like. 
in what you can get for your money around here. Yeah. And he hates the word compromising, but that's what he needs to do. You can see yourself here? Definitely, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah? Yeah. We better work on him, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we should. <laughs> I think this place is already working on him, but a little nudge from Leah won't hurt. Well, baby, I really like the place. Yeah? Yeah. It seems to be in a nice location. The park is nearby. There's a train station not so far. Well, it's just great that they're happy and they're smiling. I'm particularly pleased that Andrew's looking quite so relaxed. But the only worry that I've got is that whilst this would suit them very well for now, are they thinking long term enough? Part of the reason for this is so they could have lots more children. Would they? Would this be right at that point? Phil, make sure this little family are thinking big enough. Have you had a thought as to how long you want this? first property to last you for? I think it was a house a lot longer because it's a flat. Even though it's quite spacious, it is a two and a half, not three bedroom. Mm -hmm. So we, we might struggle with space. At least this place you feel you're getting more for your money than the first place, uh, which is a little disappointing. But more to see tomorrow. So yeah. um, don't sweat overnight, but keep in a positive frame of mind. Especially okay. you. <laughs> it's progress, but with Andrew's fears about the value of the market, the long-term buy is the best one. So I sense there's still a bit of thinking to do. Well, no such fears back with Dan and Lucy. We're in Forest Hill. It's another area full of cafes and culture. And although I persuaded them to add a little to their budget, I'm taking them to see something well within their new £380,000 maximum. Now, I'm just going to say this before we go in. The previous property mm. had a lot of wow factor. Yeah. yeah, a lot. You would have to put in the wow factor into this property, but it has enormous potential. I think the potential is for you. OK. The problem in the Broccoli flat was the small second bedroom, and that's not an issue here. Both double bedrooms are big, although this one is currently being used as a sitting room. The lounge diner is a decent size too. This is a leasehold property, and the remaining lease period is less than the usual mortgage minimum of 75 years, meaning cash buyers like Dan and Lucy are in a stronger position than those who need to borrow money. So, wow, this is on at £325,000. <gasps> because there's 63 years left on the lease. Uh, okay. Now, it will cost you about £25,000 to extend the lease. Mm. But because you're buying cash, you don't need to do that now. Mm. Yeah, that's true. You haven't got the problem with the mortgage company no. who would have an objection to a 63. So mm. everybody else is looking at this and thinking they have to pay 350 for it. But period features, fireplace, ceiling Amazing. height. Amazing, high ceilings, my favorite, bay window, wooden floors, fireplace, yeah. the whole lot. You're happy, aren't you? Yeah, so far yeah. so good. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it ticks all the boxes, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Okie doke, after you. Cool. Thank you. So already big positives. I'm just hoping they can share your vision of how amazing this place could be with a bit of work. So not now, but when you had a bit of time and a bit of money, you could make this room much, much wider. Yeah, mm. that sounds really good. By extending into the side return, you get a huge open plan kitchen sitting room with glass double doors at the back, opening out into the garden. Obviously, any reconfiguration is subject to planning conditions. As well as scope for improvements, the other bonus here is the size of that second bedroom. It's big a really enough. big space, isn't it? Yeah, it's big enough. It's got a decent window. Yeah. Although nice and light and bright, isn't it? It's good. OK, cool. I like it. A good space for Dan's mum to come and stay. So you've seen it all now? Yes. Yeah. And um, what do you think? It has a really great feel to it. It ticks a lot of your boxes, doesn't it? Ceiling yeah. height, floorboards, rooms. Yeah, loving the potential. The two properties we've seen so far, property one, property two, which is coming higher? For me, it's this one. Yeah? OK, good, because for me, it's this one too. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic, that's what we like. Yeah. OK, so I think moving on. Yes, yeah. definitely, let's go. That's a confident smile, Kirsty. But watch your stare. There's trip hazards everywhere in this market. This week, we're in the pricey spots of South East London. I'm helping Leah and Andrew. They're trying to balance out space for a growing family with a short commute to the city, giving me the challenge of the millennium. And I'm trying to help newly engaged Dan and Lucy find that all-important first home while facing one of life's greatest hurdles. Not only are they living in a B&B, 
but Dan's mum has been diagnosed with terminal cancer, so they need some stability and quickly. With Andrew and Leah, the amazing Kidbrook Village flat was a winner, other than their slight concern at how quickly an expanding family might outgrow it. So I'm taking them to see a house in the historical naval and military town of Woolwich. It's still close to Canary Wharf and it's £115,000 under budget, but this one does have a more complicated commute. I can't find where the train station is. OK. In terms of transport, we're a bus ride to Lewisham, so that's about a... 16, 17 minute journey and then obviously the DLR on from there. So your, your door to door, 40, 45 minutes, I reckon. Half a million pounds um, to get a bus to work isn't for me. OK. okay. Fine. <laughs> don't, don't know what to say to that. I don't know why you're even going in. No, to the garage. Well, I'm hoping the inside will beat those bussing blues. Wish me luck. Come and look at the back. Unlike the previous ultra-modern flat, this house does have the three double bedrooms, meaning plenty of room for more kids. There's a large open-plan lounge diner and gardens at the front and back of the property. And it's significantly within budget, at £485,000. It opens to, I think, a very generous living dining room. It looks really nice. Oh, I can look at it. It's the window. Fantastic view. Really nice. At least Leah's on board, Phil. I'm happy. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a lovely house, uh, lovely view. I'm sure we can find many lovely houses with lovely views in the wrong area. Uh, oh. This isn't... This programme isn't called Lovely House with a Lovely View. <laughs> in the wrong area. area. Yes. Is it? Ouch. Let's move this house to black heat. Well, then it would be virtually... <laughs> well, it would be £200,000 more easily. Yeah. Yes. So they want this space in the previous location, but that's impossible in their budget. It seems whatever I show them, Andrew's uncertainty of what and when to buy is holding them back. Something needs to change. What about when the big crash of 2015 oh, happens? Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Carry on renting. Carry on renting for all I care. Yeah. No. Pay somebody else's mortgage off and wait for the crash. It's finally happened. A pip at the end of his patience. <sighs> all a bit frustrating, really. I only search for what people ask me to go looking for, and right now, I don't know who's more confused, me or them. I'm not getting anywhere very fast at the moment. Hello. Is it still a no? It is still a no. It's a perfectly lovely house. It's not for us. Just so I know, where are your heads at from property two? It's a nice flat. It's a lovely flat. Yeah. But it's not the, the house. We wouldn't keep for too home. long. Yeah. 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 And now that's property two out as well. Oh, Phil, this is going from bad to worse. It's not difficult to, to understand. The closer you go to the office, the more expensive properties sure. get. No, so think... can we yep. go further out? Yes, we can. Up to an hour, door to door, door to desk. OK. Um, for a nice big house, maybe driveway, lots of bedrooms, garden. 600,000? Surely we can find one. We've got to try, cos we've got to solve this. Please, I want a home. <laughs> Come on, then. Onwards. I think we'd better fill the car up with petrol. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some driving to do. To try to fulfil their ever-changing criteria, I've gone on ahead to the town of Beckenham. It's a 50-minute commute south of Canary Wharf, so well within Andrew's new door-to-desk limit of an hour. I've come out early on a fishing mission to find out what this new search area could offer a young family. Oh, dear. Sorry, but if I don't laugh, I'll cry. A whole salmon for a tenner? That's good value. Unlike the houses round here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's it like round here? It's lovely. A lot more younger people are coming into Beckenham now. It's good for kids. There's lots to do round here for children. I think they're going to put something like 3.8 million into regenerating Beckenham itself. I think once that's done, yeah. it'll be even better for to live in Beckenham. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank nice to talk to you. Thank you very much. Well, this sounds like the place to be. But no matter how perfect it is, and as much as I hate to admit it, I think I need Kirsty's help on this one. They're asking 600,000. Wow. But you get a nice big house with parking at the back. It's gated parking, so nice and secure. This is a three-storey, four-bedroom townhouse. On the ground floor, there's a utility room, a shower room, a bedroom and a study. The first floor has the open-plan living, dining, kitchen they like. Then on the second floor, the main bathroom and three more bedrooms, one with an ensuite. So plenty of space and no bus to work. 
it's been reduced from 625 to just under £600,000, so it's at the very top of their budget. Up on the first floor, you've got the main reception area, dining area and kitchen. Oh, wow, OK. So most of the living and the family goings-on will take place up here. I like the layout, because you can get everything done here, spend yes. most of the time here. It's a lot smaller on the inside than it looks on the outside. I guess that's because of that stairwell. The road I'm paying close attention to because I can hear traffic. It's not bad, but it's still there. Here we go again. Kirsty, help! Are we at a stage where one person is desperate for a house? <laughs> oh, and the other? <laughs> How did you figure that out? No, we're not desperate for a house, are we? We're I, not desperate. I really want a house. OK, I'm going to take Andrew to see the working station Come downstairs. On. Come on. There's no denying £600,000 is a lot of money, and of course Andrew wants to spend it wisely. No one ever knows for sure what property prices will do, but for now, Andrew needs to prioritise his desire for a family home over his concerns about the market. Now, what is this talk of a crash? All the signs, even to a novice like me, suggest perhaps 2015 is the plateau followed by a correction. What would you be doing during the correction? We would be in a better position because we'd still have our savings. Also, we would perhaps have a, a wider choice of properties closer to London. Then no property that we look at is ever going to be right. And essentially, what you're doing is you're looking at houses to keep your wife happy, and you can turn to her and say, I looked. I looked at Phil and Kirsty. Don't get much better than that. But deep down inside, you want to wait and see what's going to happen next year. Seems fair. If we hadn't found something today, then that, that's the plan. You're never going to find something until you believe that it's at the right price, and at the moment you don't believe that it's at the right price. That's right. At least now we know what's going on. I'd better break it to Phil. Go on, then. He doesn't want to buy any house. Well, why did he ring me up, then? Because she wants a house, and he doesn't want to turn around to her and say, I think the market's coming down and I don't want to spend any money until next year. Very small. This isn't a bedroom. Mm. This is a cupboard. That said, he'll probably find something he loves next week, because that's always the way of the world. Not in my world. I refuse to be beaten, Kirsty. And if this isn't the house for them, I want one last chance to find them somewhere that is. Awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it to be? This isn't the place okay. for us. Certainly not the property you want to go all in for. OK. If we're not able to get um, as central as we'd like to be, we would go the other way and go far out. Is there anywhere that you've got in mind that you would like to explore? Seven Oaks. Isn't it a place that we considered before? I do know, Ken, and Seven Oaks is on this good train line and you could get a reasonable house for your kind of money. So there's your challenge, Pip. Tick tock, tick tock. She's just yeah. laughing at me cos she knows I'm going to have a sleepless <laughs> night. Kidding. Come on, get out of here. I've got a lot of work to do. Oh, dear. No point faffing around. Oh, God. Oh, well, it's only 20 miles south of where we started. I have every faith in you, Phil. It's a new day and the final property for Dan and Lucy. They love the potential of the Forest Hill flat, and now I want to show them something bigger which doesn't need renovating, so we're pushing two miles east into Catford. It's one of the last places in the capital that's still reasonably priced. Quick connections into London, great period conversions, and as Catford's on the up and up, I really think this could be their perfect area. Unfortunately, not everyone shares my opinion. Hello. I may be wasting your time, I'm afraid. What do you mean? You've got a face like thunder. What's I know. Up? <laughs> What's up? Um, uh, Lucy has a, had a bit of a fit about being in Catford. She thought we understood the areas that she wanted to be in, and Catford most certainly wasn't one of them. What's happening to us this week? I don't know. So Dan and Lucy aren't sold on the area, but after a bit of persuasion, they have agreed to come and view the flat. Right, OK, we're not going to stand outside this property and ask whether you like the area. We're going to go straight in. OK, great. Thank you. Off to you. Thank you very much. That's all we need, as if our luck's not bad enough already. I think this might be a quick view. Maybe, but it's important to let them see what their money can buy if they stretch their ideal location. 
This is a Victorian ground floor flat with two large double bedrooms, so plenty of room to accommodate Dan's mum. It's got the high ceilings, which I know they love, and opens out onto a fabulous 100-foot garden. It's by far the biggest property we've found for them, and at £379,950, bang on their 380 budget. So does this fulfil all their wants, on the inside at least? It's spacious, it's light, high ceilings, big bay windows, Floor period boards. features, everything. Yeah. I mean, it's a lovely street as well. I if... think if we were heading towards a family quite soon, the area w might have been something that we could have compromised on. Poor Lucy. It seems the stress of their situation is really taking its toll. I think we just feel really trapped by desperation at the moment. We need to make a choice, but I'm so frightened of making the uh... bad choice. <laughs> It's difficult. Okay. It's always difficult, and particularly when you you kind of want to get on with it, but yeah. you're, you don't want to make the wrong decision. No, 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 we need to make the right decision. I think what you said was very perceptive. If you're in a different stage in your life, you might be looking more for size. What would you do? If it, if it was me, I'd buy that Forest Hill flat, I'd buy it now. I mean, we were talking about, uh, on the way here, making an offer on that flat. Um, we were piecing it all together and seeing the potential and, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was great. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't yeah, it? Really lovely. <laughs> For 325, perhaps less, yes. 320, yeah. mm. yes. you know. We're all under quite a lot of pressure this week. You with your decisions, house hunting, I've got a nightmare going on at my end. Mm. Would you mind if I excuse myself? Not at all. Get going. And got Not on with things. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Very nice Cheers. to meet you Bye both. Bye. Yeah. Good luck this afternoon. I thought I was in problems, but I think Kirsty's got just as many here. Have a last look around. I'll be outside. Come out when you're ready, and then we'll make a decision about where we go next. OK, wonderful. It's been a tough year, but at least this flat is helping them find some focus. It's the right property at the right price, but not, as far as Lucy's concerned, in the right area. A lot of people think Catford's really up and coming. But they want an area which is up and come. Right. Okie dokie. So, I think we need to go somewhere and have a chat, don't we? Yes. Yep. Right, let's do that. Bye bye, Catford. So, we're turning our backs on the area and hopefully on our bad luck too. In South East London, our eagle eyes are focused on finding homes for two sets of first-time buyers. Newly engaged Dan and Lucy seem to have decided on which nest is best, property two in Forest Hill. We were talking about, uh, on the way here, making an offer on that flat. Whereas I've been running around like a headless chicken, trying to sort out Andrew and Leah's pecking order. Maybe driveway, lots of bedrooms, garden. 600,000? Surely we can find one. Well, we have. But will Andrew feel confident enough to commit? Following their ever-changing wishes, we're now in Kent's commuter belt town of Sevenoaks, more than ten times further from his work than the original search area. Whilst Andrew and Leah check out the local area, I've pulled it out of the bag at the 11th hour, and we've got a viewing of a house which has almost all of what Andrew's asked for. It's detached with a driveway, garage and garden. There are four bedrooms and an open-plan kitchen breakfast room. It is a few miles from the station, but for the size, it's as close as we can get within budget. I really hope this will be what they're looking for. From what I saw on the internet and agents that I spoke to, this looked to be a pretty good example of, of what your money buys. But we are still three miles out of Seven Oaks. It's a long way. It's too far to walk. It's even probably too far to bike. I wouldn't pick a place that is so far away from the train station. If this property was in Seven Oaks, it would cost you 150, 200,000 more than this. Yeah, we understand. To be able to live in Seven Oaks and get to work easily, yeah. we would compromise on the fact that it's detached. Yeah. It should just be ruled out straight away. I, I'm here to try and help you move forward. Now. Okay. Let's just go and thrash out what to do. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Sounds good to me. OK. Well, this isn't going to be the home for Andrew and Leah. I think it's fair to say I've tried everything on this search. Back with Dan and Lucy, and after a tear-filled final property, the silver lining to that Catford clad is that the flat in Forest Hill has emerged as their clear favourite. So are they willing to put in an offer and hopefully move out of their B&B? As their cash buyers, the fact that there's only 63 years left on the lease actually works in their favour. At the moment, that flat is on the market at 325. Uh -huh. 
it will cost approximately £25,000 to extend the lease mm -hmm. and 35 to 40 to finish it up to spec. Okay. I mean, we, we like the flat, but we, yeah. we do love the potential. We've got yeah. that potential to expand it and add value to it and also make it into the place that we want it to be. Yeah, I think so. We would like to put on an offer, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. Amazing news. Now it's just a question of how much. We're probably looking around the 310. Yeah. What do you think? I think 310 to 315. Their maximum budget is £380,000, so with the cost of the lease extension and renovation work, they need to get as far under the 325 asking price as possible. I don't think there's any harm in offering lower because you're the first people to offer and, okay. you know, the one that offers is the one that gets the flat. So knowing that our back's up against the wall as far as accommodation goes, what would you recommend doing? There's something called an attended exchange. Hmm. It's very, very rarely done. Is that where you both of you turn up in the same, same room with room. your solicitors yeah. and go and through you just it? Do it. Okay. It's okay. a very effective way of speedily buying a house. I do not know why more people don't do it. We can do it. We can camp outside of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I offer 310 with an attended exchange? Yes. 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 It's a low offer, but they are in a strong position. Natalie is Kirsty. I have spoken to my clients and they do really, really want that flat. So they have instructed me to make an offer at £310,000. Right. OK. Well, there are other things that I wanted to address. My client would really like to have an attended exchange within two weeks. Do you think your client would be up for that? OK. Thanks, Natalie. OK. Bye. She said that she'd had a conversation with her client about her bottom line and 310 was below her bottom line. OK. OK. Well, I mean, we can go up to 315, of course. Um, can we go up to 318? Yeah. Great. Good. OK, okay. so is it just, it's just a waiting game now? It's just now. a waiting game now. OK. With Andrew and Leah, we've ended up a long way from where we started. But at least a decision has been made. Seven Oaks is the place we, where we want to leave. It will be okay. Seven Oaks? You think so? Yeah, I'm going to make sure that happens. I really love the town. He loves it too. We found a place that is comfortable to London. Yes. And when I go back to work, I can also get to my job, which yeah. is important, because I, I do want to go back to work. So we found a position that you're both comfortable with. You're comfortable with the commute into town. But you won't be living in a detached four-bedroom house with a garage and a driveway in That's some right. rooms. No, no. So um, maybe that will wait till the next place. And okay. for now, we will try and make the best of what we can around here. I think having done this, mentally I'm prepared to leave London, um, the London mm. lifestyle, and then uh, switch to the country commuter mm. lifestyle. Um, I think that is a massive move for you mm. inside of three days, and you are much clearer now. I think I could be a genuine help right now, but we are where we are. Um, best of luck with Thank your search. Thank you, Thank you so much. Well, at least I found them the where. Now I just hope they can find themselves something suitable in Seven Oaks. Back with Dan and Lucy, they offered 310 for the Forest Hill flat, 15 grand under the asking price. Hello. It is a low opening offer, but they're happy to go up to 318,000 if they need to. Right. Okie dokie. So she will accept £312,500 and she will go for an attended exchange and 100% happy to accept that. Uh, that is brilliant. It sure is amazing news and they can finally move out of the B&B. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Natalie. Thank you so much. OK, bye. Yeah! Amazing. <laughs> Yay, well done. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so pleased. Oh, honestly, you're going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> I just can't believe it's actually happened. Yeah. And at 312. Yeah, so I think that's, I'm really thrilled. That's massively under budget, leaving them cash to renovate and extend the lease. Oh my God, yeah. you got us enough for accepted. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm re I couldn't be more Thank thrilled. You. After the year they've had, <laughs> this couldn't have come at a better time. But sadly, seven weeks on and things haven't gone to plan for Dan and Lucy. 
An unusual issue was flagged with the lease, meaning that the work they wanted to do might not be fully allowed, so they decided to pull out of the purchase. But now they're super focused on what they want, a similar property ideally in the same area with scope to renovate. So I don't think it'll be long before they're getting their stuff out of storage and can put B&B living behind them for good. As for Andrew and Leah, I doubted they'd ever find something that he thought was value for money. But I'm happy to report that three days after I left them, they bought a house in Sevenoaks. Here is our new home, plot 275. <laughs> and it's so new, it hasn't even been built yet. They've bought off-plan a four-bedroom, three-bathroom townhouse with a private garden, and it should be finished within eight months. We look at each other and say, yeah, this is it. It's their top spec house in the development. And of course, it's two minutes from the train station. And at 581,000, it comes in 19 grand under budget. So it was well worth the trip to Kent. I think Phil really helped us realize that we're probably a bit unrealistic and gave us that push that we needed to finally find a place and go for it. It is a weight off my mind. I no longer read all of the uh, negative news about the potential of a, a crash. We just look forward to getting on with life, having another baby enjoying a brand new house in a lovely area. The end result is, is fantastic. I couldn't agree more. And it just goes to show that when you find the right place, all those fears just disappear. Good luck to them.